and welcome back to my channel. So fall is definitely my favorite time of the year when it comes to desserts. I just absolutely love the flavors, the spices, and baking itself is just a really fun thing to do this time of year. So today I'm going to share with you my absolute favorite desserts. I've been making all four of these recipes for a long time now. They are tried and tested recipes. And because you guys know that I do like to be on the healthier side, I'm going to share with you along the way some really easy substitutions you can make that's not going to sacrifice the flavor of your desserts, but will make them just a little bit healthier. I'm gonna have all of the detailed recipes down in the description box along with my other recipe videos I've done. And with all of that said, let's jump into these amazing fall inspired desserts. First up is a baked apple dish. This is one of my favorites. Start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees. Get a large washed apple. And if you need to, cut off a little bit of the bottom to make sure it stands up straight and then cut off a little piece of the top like so. Then you can use either a spoon or a melon baller like this one to carve out the center of the apple. We're making a little apple bowl. So you can set aside the inside bits from the apple and use them in a smoothie or just eat them as a snack just so that part doesn't go to waste. And once you're done, it should look like this, nice and hollow inside. And now's the fun part. You can line up your apples and stuff them with some delicious ingredients. I personally like to layer some almond butter to start. Then I add some fresh berries, blueberries and raspberries are personally my favorite for this. Then some chopped pecans, it gives it a nice crunch. I add some more almond butter on top of this. You can use hazelnut butter or peanut butter, whatever you like. Then a dash of pumpkin pie spice, a little dash of salt. Then I add some coconut flakes. I love the texture that this gives and they taste really delicious once they're toasted. Then I finish it off with just a little bit more berries and a drizzle of honey just to add some moisture to it. If you don't wanna add honey, you can just use a teaspoon of water. Then pop these guys into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. You want them to be nice and soft and fork tender, but not to the point where they're falling apart. So watch them closely. I recommend eating these in a bowl so you could break open the apple and really get in there and get all the ingredients together. This is so incredibly good. You can customize these however you like and I know you will love them. Up next is a healthier version of a pumpkin spice frappuccino. And one little trick I like to use for this is to scoop my pumpkin puree into a Ziploc bag. I snip off the corner and then pipe this into an ice cube tray. This creates a little pumpkin ice cubes, which are perfect for this. So I use four of these pumpkin ice cubes and then one and a half cups of cold coffee. I actually found this cold brew coffee already made from Trader Joe's, it's super convenient. Then I add some almond milk or whatever you like. This is my new favorite type of almond milk. And then a tablespoon of sugar. So for my sugar substitute, I use something called xylitol. It's the same taste and sweetness level as sugar. It has a low glycemic index, so it's not gonna spike your blood sugar. I will put more information about it down below. I like mine extra thick, so I add a little bit more ice and then blend this all together. This is my absolute favorite seasonal drink. It's so refreshing and it's nice and balanced. It's not too sweet, not too pumpkin-y. This next recipe is a healthier version of an apple crumble. This is my go-to dessert. It never lets me down. I absolutely love it. So start by peeling and chopping four gala apples. You want them to be in small, even-sized chunks so they cook evenly. Then for the crumble, we're gonna start with one cup of oats and then one cup of flour. For the flour substitute for this one, I find that almond flour works really well. It has a slightly nutty taste. Then a quarter cup of sugar, I'm using xylitol, a quarter cup of nut, a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then my secret ingredient, instead of regular butter, I use a half cup of melted vegan cinnamon butter. This is so good, you will be shocked about how good this tastes. Stir this all together to combine and put it on top of your apples and pop this into a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. Halfway through cooking, I put some foil over the top just to prevent the crumble from browning too much. And then I top this off with some ice cream. I use coconut milk ice cream, it's so delicious. And this tastes just like an apple pie. It's crunchy, there's some tartness and sweetness from the apples. I just absolutely love this dish. I make it all the time, so you guys have to try this. So this last recipe is a pumpkin chocolate chip loaf that a friend made for me a few years ago and it was so good that I got the recipe from her and I've been making it ever since. So for our dry ingredients, I start with two cups of flour and as far as flour substitutions go, I recommend replacing a quarter to a half amount of the regular flour with either whole wheat flour, coconut flour, or almond flour. Alternative flours tend to be a little bit denser and they can change the flavor a little bit, so it's best to ease into it, I find. I will put more information in the description box if you're interested. Then add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, 
a half teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt. Combine this all together and set it aside. For our wet ingredients, you want two eggs, three quarter cups of canola oil, three quarter cups of sugar, again, I'm using xylitol for this, one cup of pumpkin puree, and then combine all of your wet and dry ingredients together. And then you wanna fold in about half to three quarter cups of chocolate chips, just depending on how chocolatey you want it, but this really adds an extra something, so you should not skip this step. Then pour this all into a greased loaf pan and bake it at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. You wanna just check on it and it's done once you can slide a butter knife in and it comes out clean. Sometimes I find that it takes a little bit less than 45 minutes, so just make sure you're watching it. Then slice into it and this is so moist and delicious. So that is it for today and I have to be real with you guys, one of the best parts of making recipe videos for me is that I get to eat like a queen for the rest of the week. I have so much delicious food now in my house so I'm pretty excited about that. Anyway, another quick announcement I have is that I started doing skincare videos and blog posts over on my blog. I'm gonna have those at least once a week, if not twice a week. This week I shared five tips for keeping your skin hydrated during the drier months. And that is it for this week. Please subscribe if you are new here. I have so many exciting videos coming up and I will see you guys next week with a new video. Bye. Ryan Bradford Thomas. Where are you? Babe. What? Do you know what happened to my desserts? No. 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 It was the dog, definitely the dog.